you said you were only going to tell one joke. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, so, so far, I'm, I'm, I'm away from that table. <laughs> um, so far, it, it's just turned out by happenstance that uh, everyone speaking today has a gimmick. Or what I believe in show business is called a shtick. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, he's not. Uh, not at all. Um, and uh, so we had uh, a parrot joke to start with. And then uh, we had some reading of poetry. And uh, my shtick today is a bit of old-fashioned uh, visual assistance. Because you will see that on your tables, you have photocopies. And um, keeping in the um, mood of austerity, there is not a photocopy for each person. And there is one photocopy for each two of you to share. Yes? So I just wonder how many of you recognize this picture? Yeah? yeah? The death of General Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've got to say that I think one of the most overused words in the English language at the moment is iconic. You know, if you listen to Radio 4, they talk about iconic hamburgers, <laughs> iconic handbags, iconic everything other than pictures. And this is the most iconic picture of the 18th century. When it was shown at the Royal Academy in 1771, it created a huge sensation. So much so that Benjamin West, the artist, had to paint six versions of it because the demand was so high. But what West, who I've written a book about, um, what West realized was that whilst you could make money painting pictures, you could probably make more money by making engravings that reproduce the picture and selling them to the rising middle classes. The consequent engraving became the most widely distributed image of the 18th century. And it provides an incredible insight into various aspects of life in the 18th century. Um, one of them I'm going to talk about very briefly is what it tells us about money. Because comparing money across the centuries is always quite interesting. You know, you read a Jane Austen novel, and they talk about someone being worth £2,000 a year. And you sort of think, is that a lot? Or is that a little? And when you try to look it up in a price comparison table, it either shows you a multiple of 100 or 1,200, which is not terribly helpful. And part of the difficulty with comparing prices across the centuries is that some things that were very, very, very cheap in the 18th century, like labor, are now very expensive. Some things that we have now, like televisions, didn't exist in the 18th century, so it's hard to make a comparison in terms of prices. Now, when the engraving of the Death of Wolf went on sale, it was being sold for a guinea. And I wondered, well, gosh, is a guinea expensive? What could I compare it to? Well, I looked at Boswell's London Diary, and it recounts how when Boswell, as the ultimate young man on make, came to London, the first thing he had to buy was a beautiful sword. Because anyone who aspired to be a gentleman had to wear a sword. He went to the royal sword maker and bought a silver hilted sword, which cost him five guineas. That's a super luxury item. So a sword costs five times as much as a black and white engraving. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that engravings were expensive or that swords were cheap? It's very hard to tell. But what we can tell is that a guinea engraving was really only for the top layer of society. This was at a time when you could live a gentlemanly lifestyle for 200 pounds a year. So to spend one two hundredth of that on one black and white engraving was quite, quite a significant investment. The people who really counted in the 18th century earned over a thousand pounds a year. And interestingly enough, there were about 5,000 of them. So that's one-tenth of one percent of the population were the elite. It's the same proportion today. And it was the same proportion during the Roman Empire. So we are stuck with one-tenth of one percent. 
And what is particularly fascinating about the engraving of the death of Wolf, which makes it a genuine icon, is the fact that out of the 5,000 top people in the country in the 1770s, 3,000 of them owned a copy of the death of Wolf. And that really is a, uh, what media people would call a level of penetration that uh, television networks only dream of. So, you know, Strictly has got nothing <laughs> at all on the death of Wolf. <laughs> now, what it also shows us about the 18th century is something about the meaning of truth. Because this picture purports to represent the death of General James Wolfe at the Battle of Quebec on September the 13th, 1759. Very few of the people in the picture were actually with Wolf when he died. <laughs> one of them wasn't in Canada, and another one of them wasn't even in North America. And you know something? In the 18th century, this didn't matter, because the idea of truthfulness in the 18th century was not reportage, not to record things as they were, but to record them as they should have been. And that's why this picture captured the popular imagination, because it showed the great, the first imperial martyr of British history, General James Wolfe. It showed him dying as he should have died, rather than as he did die. And this captured the popular imagination and gave it an endurance and a persistence and an emotional power that would have been totally lacking if it had just been a bit of reports large. And the tradition that Benjamin West established of idealized truth lives on even in, for example, if you remember the great World War II photograph of the raising of the American flag okay. over Iwo Jima, which of course was totally staged. And in fact, borrows the same composition as the death of Wolf. So there is a, an incredible persistence of this imagery, which affects us all today. It also represents, and I, my subtitle is The Struggle to be Modern, it represents something about what being modern is. And I was asked, well, what is it to be modern in the 18th century? Modern is very different from modernism as a style. Being modern is not looking over your shoulder all the time. It's worth remembering that until about 1750, people were always feeling inferior to the Greeks and the Romans. Everything was compared to the great achievements of the classical past. And West came along and broke the mold by saying that what has happened today is history. And it's a history of which we can be proud, and it's a history that equals the great achievements of the past. And that's why this picture represents one of the first great steps on the road to being modern. Thank you very much.